Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to the full review of the HP Pavilion Gaming 15 EC 1024AX with the Ryzen 5 4600H and GTX 1650. We'll go through each and every detail of the laptop from the build to the thermals, gaming performance, and battery life, and so on. Timestamps to each section of the review will be given in the description. If you feel the laptop is worth your money, I have affiliate links down in the description for you to purchase the laptop. So without any further ado, let's get right into the review. First up, let's talk specs. So we are talking about the 1024AX base model that retails for 60,000 rupees. So the CPU is the Ryzen 5 4600H and the GPU is the NVIDIA GTX 1650 4GB GDDR6. I have reviewed the laptop with only single channel RAM that is single stick of 8GB DDR4 sodium at 3200MHz CL22. This particular base model only comes with a 1TB 5400RPM hard drive and no SSD. However, I have installed a Western Digital 120GB M.2 SATA SSD as my boot drive for fast Windows performance, as this laptop really needs it. And the hard drive is only used for mass storage and games. Now let's talk about build and design. The laptop is entirely made of plastic and weighs only about 1.9 kilos. It depends on people's perspective on whether they view the build as a pro or a con. The plastic build means it doesn't feel as solid as say aluminum but on the other hand the laptop is quite light and easy to carry around. The laptop initially made a lot of squeaky noises but as I anticipated it was because of this plastic flexing around the tight screws but after about 2 weeks of use the laptop doesn't make any noise. The hinge is also very well dampened and smooth, however, there is some flex with the lid as the lid is very slim. The design is however is definitely a pro for me, it looks very understated with a simple design, matte finish and white backlighting. This laptop can be easily disguised as an office laptop. In terms of I.O., the pavilion has two USB Type-A ports, only one of them being USB 3.0, one USB 3.1 Type-C with no power delivery or display port support, one full-size HDMI 2.0 port. 3.5mm audio combo jack and a full sized SD card slot. The laptop is charged through the barrel port using the 150W AC adapter. I kinda wish this laptop had an extra USB 3.0 Type-A port. The keyboard is a fully featured one with numpad and white backlighting. The backlighting has two levels of brightness aside from turning off. The duration of the backlight can be controlled in the BIOS. I wish this keyboard had full sized up and down arrow keys. As far as the typing experience is concerned, it feels like typing on an ultrabook and not on a gaming laptop. It has a shorter key travel than most gaming laptops and you can type really fast. It is also very quiet and requires very little actuation force. However, I much prefer the keyboard on my 2018 Predator, which requires more force and is more tactile. The Pavilion's keyboard is definitely not very well suited for angry and short-tempered gamers for sure. The touchpad is adequately large and is quite wide and less tall. It features Elantec drivers and not Windows Precision drivers, but the tracking is very good and gestures work well. So this is what the web camera looks like under room lights. I'd say pretty decent for zoom calls. Now let's talk about the display and the speaker. So the Pavilion 1024AX base model comes with a standard 60Hz 1080p IPS panel with 250 nits of brightness and NTSC color gamut coverage of 45%. As I've said during my unboxing, I feel the display out of the box was a bit too warm for my taste so I changed the color temperature from 6500 Kelvin to 7900 Kelvin through the AMD Adrenaline software. Apart from that, I feel the display quality is adequate for the price. It's bright enough indoors even under direct ring light, the viewing angles are wide enough from side to side and only a little worse from top to bottom. Esports gamers may feel 60Hz to be limiting but it's perfectly adequate for my use case. Getting a good 144Hz display with good response times is next to impossible in this price range anyways, especially in India. As far as the front facing speakers are concerned, they are loud enough but feel bit hollow with no low end. It sounds too flat for my taste. My 2018 Predator blows this out of the water, there is no comparison. The Bang & Olufsen audio control software does improve the sound signature quite a bit. I feel these settings make the speakers sound the best. Overall, I feel the speakers on this laptop is just average and one of the rare downsides of this laptop. Now let's move on to the meat of the review, that is the thermals and the performance. Now I have done a detailed thermal testing review of the laptop, I recommend you to watch that video for detailed information. I will briefly discuss it here. So initially I was skeptical of the thermal performance of this laptop as it has both the CPU and the GPU fans together and share the same heatsink. However, coupled with the efficiency and low power requirements of the Ryzen 5 4600H and large vents all across the width of the bottom panel, the CPU stays really cool even under all-core load and has no problem maintaining 4000MHz all-core turbo. The laptop also maintains a good balance of fan noise and thermals. The fan completely stops spinning on idle or while doing light office works. However, it does take up slightly longer to reach maximum speed when the CPU is hit with an all-core load. You can select in the BIOS whether you want to keep the fans always on or not. 
you can check my video on enabling manual fan controls as the built-in Omen game center is completely useless and provides no controls whatsoever. The brilliant CPU performance is reflected from the high cinnamon scores. I don't think there is any other laptop in this price range that can perform as well as the Pavilion. I wanna say though, vents are great for proper airflow, but they do suck in dust. As you can see here, dust is already starting to build up. So make sure to clean the fans every 2-3 months if you live in a dusty city like Delhi and all. Summer or winter doesn't matter, however, a dust clocked laptop will definitely overheat. In terms of gaming performance, the Pavilion is one of the best entry-level gaming laptops and provides some of the best performances out of the GTX 1650 graphics card. I have done complete gaming review of the HP Pavilion and I highly recommend you to check it out. In short, I found the Pavilion offers some of the highest frame rates out of the GTX 1650 and temps while gaming stay very low. For those who will game on external high refresh rate displays, the HDMI port is directly connected to the Nvidia graphics card. Overall, the Pavilion is as impressive as it gets when it comes to entry-level gaming laptops. Last but not the least, let's talk battery life. The Pavilion comes with a 52 watt hour battery and the battery life is really, really good. It does goes to show how efficient these Zen 2 mobile processors are. So when the laptop is not plugged in, I keep the laptop in these following settings. Battery saver mode stays on, background apps are always disabled, Wi-Fi is always on and in metered connection mode, keyboard backlight stays off when not required and display brightness is set to 40%. And just with a 52 watt hour battery, I was able to use the pavilion from 2.15pm to 6.15pm which is 4 hours and ended the session with 58% battery remaining. I watched YouTube on Mozilla Firefox for about 2.5 hours and then wrote the script to this video. After that I shut down the laptop and used it from 8pm watched a bit of YouTube and edited the script a bit. They downloaded a 2 hours long movie and watched it. The laptop was on airplane mode when I was watching the movie. So I ended my whole day of use with the laptop at 11pm with 17% battery still remaining. That's about 7 hours of light usage with some battery to spare. So excellent battery life. Also the bundled 150W AC adapter can charge the laptop really quickly. Although the last 1% takes some time to charge. And that's it guys, that rounds up my coverage of the HP Pavilion Gaming 15 EC1024AX. When the laptop came out, I predicted it to be the best entry-level gaming laptop on the market and after extensive testing, I stay with my opinion. Other than a couple of cons like one less USB Type-A port, average speakers and debatable build quality, the Pavilion delivers in all other aspects. It's got a very good looking design, it's lightweight and portable, the display is about as good as it gets in this price range and in terms of thermals and CPU performance, it's absolutely amazing. Temps are always under control, fan noise is low and clock speeds are consistently maxed out. Gaming performance of the GTX 1650 in this laptop is among the best that I have seen. Honestly, for someone who is on a tight budget and looking to purchase his or her first gaming laptop, there is no better choice than the base model pavilion. This laptop can easily be used as a work laptop due to its understated design and surprisingly excellent battery life. So that's it for this video guys, I'm gonna continue putting more videos on this laptop like dual channel ramp performance in games, dedicated game reviews on this laptop and so on. If you want to see detailed thermal testing and CPU performance or detailed gaming performance of this laptop, links are in the description. And if you decide to buy this laptop, then I have affiliate links down there too. That's it guys, this is the last video on my channel for 2020. Wish you all a very happy new year in advance. Hope 2021 will be much better year for all of us. Thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe for more content and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.